back, WrestleRand. This is the 91st edition of WrestleRand here today with, of course, your host for the most, Bleacher Report, Future Commons Level 3, Graham G.S. Matthews here today to review Monday Night Raw for November 12, 2012. A great, excellent edition of Monday Night Raw this week. Of course, only mere days away from the WWE Survivor Series pay-per-view, <coughs> which is shaping up to be a great show. Cannot wait for that. And, of course, Raw set the stage for that event in only a couple of days. So to kick off the show, we had Randy Orton versus Dolph Ziggler. A very good match between these two. These two are having are incapable of having bad matches together. Great chemistry between both these guys. My only um, complaint as far as this match goes is the fact that it went too short. Of course, that was to lead into the tag team match that followed, but even still, it should have gone on a little bit longer. But even still, I'm always, always with the idea of kicking off the show with some in-ring in, in action. As we saw last week, the eight-man tag team match. I'm sorry, the six-man tag team match. And Ron England last week, they continue the... Um, trend this week with another big tag team match that followed with Randy Orton, Dolph Ziggler, Del Rio, and Kofi Kingston. So I like the uh, I, I like the move by having the show kick off with them in wrestling. That's a very good move. Nice change of pace. And of course, as I just said, with Dolph Ziggler and Alberto Del Rio defeating the tandem of Kofi Kingston and Randy Orton. Of course, Randy Orton and Kofi Kingston are a very interesting tag team after what happened at the uh, Survivor Series a couple of years ago. Not specifically at Survivor Series, but just number of months that Randy Orton and Kofi Kingston feuded in late 2009, early 2010. Of course, WWE didn't mention that, or in commentary at least. But even still, if you really think about it, Randy Orton and Kofi Kingston have been involved in the same Survivor Series matchup in 2008, 2009, last year, and this year. So four years out of the last five years, that's pretty crazy. But even still, um, this is a very good tag team match. A lot of great action, a lot of non-stop action, really exciting action. Um, really, really enjoyed it and liked the move with the heels going over here because I had the feeling that the faces will go over on Sunday. So that was a great move to have Dolph Ziggler and Del Rio go over here. So up next, we had a promo involving Vicky Guerrero, AJ, Dolph Ziggler, and eventually John Cena. Of course, this continued the trend of Vicky Guerrero exposing evidence. And of course, I do the air quotes um, because it's not really all that much. You know, it's not really evidence, uh, if I like to really call it that. I mean, even still, I don't really, if you can consider it evidence, it's more of the same bullshit every single week, and it doesn't lead to anything. Of course, as I've said time and time again on spoilers, same as GSM, and on this show, of course, it's PG. You're not going to show a sex tape or anything. It's it's a PG angle. It's Claire Lynch in WWE. There's really no other way to put it. Um, it could be far, far worse, but as far as now, I mean, it's just getting annoying by this point. They just keep on doing the same crap every single week. I like AJ. I like Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler shouldn't even be involved in this unless they're going to have a feud with John Cena. They should have had that match with Survivor Series. They kind of botched that last week, but even still, maybe we'll get that at TLC, so I won't complain about that just yet. But even still, AJ's a great character. If only this ends in her turning heel or having her pair up with Dolph Ziggler. Then I'll be for it. I'll be excited for that. But if this doesn't really lead anywhere at all, then this is just one big waste of time. I mean, it had some potential at the beginning three weeks ago when it started. But right now, I'm not really feeling the storyline at all. So up next, we had a brief squash match. It's World Heavyweight Champion, Big Show squashing William Regal. Yes, William fucking Regal, my, my guy. The guy that got me into wrestling four and a half years ago. The guy that I mark out for every single time he appears on television. I believe this is his first Monday Night Raw singles match. Since December 2010, of course, those of you watching can correct me on that, but that's as far as I know that he, that's his, that was his last singles match on Raw. So, safe to say, I was marking the hell out when I saw William Regal in the ring for his match against the World Heavyweight Champion. Of course, I did not do a review for Super SmackDown last week, but an update from that, I did watch it live on my computer. I did tape myself watching the show. I'm still in the process of editing out some certain parts and putting in the certain parts of where I marked out, my reaction for the show. It's going to be a little late by this point, but I'm still going to put it up regardless to see, just for people to see my reaction to William Regal being on the show in England. That was absolutely amazing. I thank WWE for putting Regal on uh, Raw last week and a brief cameo appearance on SmackDown last week as well as Raw last night. It was absolutely amazing being a huge Regal mark that I am. I can't say more positive things about this angle. I mean, hopefully it does lead to somewhere with Regal maybe turning on Sheamus and joining Wade Barrett, I think would be amazing. Um, a British alliance, something that we've seen similar in WWE 12, but um, or have Regal go for the World Championship. I know that's wishful thinking, but even still, anything's possible. So we move forward to our next matchup on the card. We had Layla defeat Caitlyn. I literally miss this match. I mean, my live stream was acting up. The match was about a minute, but from what I did see, it was okay. Um, basically, what you'd expect, as I just said, about a minute, so there's really nothing I could say about this anyway. But I can say that with Caitlyn going over here, becoming the new number one contender for the Divas Championship, and we'll be getting her shot at the title 
at Survivor Series on Sunday. Glad the Divas are going to be included on the Survivor Series card. They do deserve the time. The match might not be all that good. I mean, Caitlyn isn't the best in-ring worker, but she is improving. She has improved immensely since her NXT debut two years ago. But um, she is the right choice for the contendership. They have the story background with her and the Eve and the iPad thing that they've got, that they've got going on in recent weeks and the United Champions thing that's been extending for nearly two months now. Um, so at least we're finally getting a story in the Divas division, although it's not that good. But I'm glad to see Caitlyn. I like Caitlyn. I'm, I'm looking forward to this Divas title match on Sunday. Now, speaking of such, my Survivor Series predictions video will not be included in this because, of course, Raw is three hours long, so I can't fit it all into one video. But my Survivor Series prediction video will be available later this week, or so I hope. So up next, we had a very strong promo from the WWE Champion CM Funk after he involved, after he interrupted the returning Jerry Lawler, Jerry the King Lawler's promo that also involved Mick Foley. A lot of things to say about this. First of all, I really enjoyed uh, Jerry Lawler coming back. As I've said in past videos, I said back in August, I've said time and time again, I'm not Jerry Lawler's biggest fan as far as wrestling goes or commentary or whatever. With that being said, I respect the hell out of the guy. Very glad he's back. Um, thrilled to see him re fully recovered only two months removed from his heart attack on Raw. So that's insane. Not many people can say that. But um, I do dislike JR being taken off commentary. I do think that he could have stayed on commentary. They could have made a fantastic three-man booth, especially without Michael Cole's bullshit heel tactics. So um, that would have been nice, but I guess I don't know what they're doing with that as far as JR goes going forward. But even still, Lawler's uh, promo, very heartfelt, really enjoyed it. Having him hug JR and Cole, very nice moment. CM Punk interrupting, kind of logical. I predicted this a couple months ago. But um, even still, it was kind of a desperate way to get heat for CM Punk. But it was brilliant at the same time. I really like CM Punk, but I'm not going to let my bias get in the way here and say that. The heart attack of Paul Heyman was tasteless. It was unnecessary. It was just crossing the line straight out. Did not enjoy that. I mean, the promo as far as what Punk said beforehand, taking shots at all himself, that was awesome. I'm not saying not any disrespect to Lawler at all, but what CM Punk's mic work was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. The guy is a god on the mic, and this is some of his better mic work in recent weeks where he's not repeating the same stuff over and over again, especially given the history between the two guys. So I really enjoyed that. Of course, this wouldn't have not have happened if Jerry Lawler was not okay with it. So keep that in mind. Jerry Lawler was, of course, aware of the situation. He knew that they were going to be doing the angle. But even still, just because he was okay with it doesn't mean it was right. Having the heart attack with Paul Heyman and all that stuff, that was unnecessary. It, I find it a bit strange doing it after Election Day with all that shit with Linda McMahon goes. I mean, now they're doing this after Linda McMahon's not in the Senate run race anymore. But whatever, even still, the Foley promo was also very, very good. A lot of good intensity there. I've loved Nick Foley on the mic with CM Punk in recent weeks or in the last few months. They made magic here again, even though they're not going to be involved in the same match on Sunday. But even still, great work there. Up next, we had an eight-man tag team match with Rey Mysterio, Tyson Kidd, Justin Gabriel, and Sin Cara defeating the tandem of the primetime players, Primo and the Epico. A very, very fun, explosive matchup. Really enjoyed this. A lot of, lot, uh, got a lot of good time. Um, all eight guys shined. The closing moments of the match, very, very fun with everyone hitting their finishers and having Justin Gabriel pick up the victory. I knew that Rey Mysterio was going to pick up the 619 or connect with the 619 on the Primo. I did not think that Justin Gabriel would get the pin here, so that was a very nice touch, getting him the spotlight that he needs to be launching the mid-card. But um, even still, this is what the WWE Tag Team Division these days you know, is all about. This non-stop action. I'm loving it. Tag Team Division Resurrection, as I've said time and time again, I've been really, really enjoying it. Great move on WWE's part. So up next, we had a kind of a decent match between our truth and Tensai. Truth picks up the victory here, and Tony Cesaro on commentary, having Cesaro bash the troops. Um, on Veterans Day, I guess, was very fitting, so I, I don't have any problem with that. Finally, some good heat for uh, Cesaro. As far as uh, Truth and the Cesaro thing goes, um, I like it. I mean, Cesaro, since he won the United States Championship three months ago, hasn't really had any legitimate contenders. He's had a lot of joke contenders in the form of Zack Ryder, Santina Morella, Brodus Clay. They're all good opponents, but they really haven't done anything for Cesaro, Cesaro at all. The thing with Justin Gabriel only lasted a week. So I'm looking forward to this feud. This is the first, you know, real feud over the United States Championship, and I think maybe since Ziggler Ryder, I mean, oh, about a year ago, that was the last real feud over the last prestigious feud over the United States Championship. So a lot of good booking here as far as that goes, and they confirm the match for Sunday as well. So up next, Ryback destroys Brad Maddox. Um, myself, inspect, myself included, thought that 
Ryan Maddox, right? Maddox, it's Maddox, I'm sorry, I keep on botching his name, I don't like the guy, I don't like his mic skills, not a huge fan of him, I did not want him to win here, so it's safe to assume for all of you watching this, I was extremely happy to see Ryback go over here, of course those of you that know me well would know that I'm a huge Ryback fan, of course I'd love to see him go over, but even still, I just don't like Brad Maddox, hopefully with him staying off television for the, couple of, the next couple of months, he stays off TV, um, he's not really necessary on television, but even still, Ryback looks strong going to Survivor Series. Um, up next, Sheamus versus Otunga. Really nothing much to say here. Kind of a royal match. Sheamus picks up the victory. Following the matchup, they show Big Show on the, uh, on the Titan Tron, knocking out William Regal. As much as I love William Regal, this is very well done. Nice, good, n A nice, effective way to get heel heat on Big Show, even though he's been monster since he won the world title, which I'm loving. So I've been really liking the feud between Sheamus and, Del Rio, um, sorry, she Sheamus and Big Show over the World Heavyweight Championship. So I'm really looking forward to the match on Sunday as well. And, of course, hopefully Regal getting involved in the storyline will eventually, eventually benefit him in some way by the end of it. So up next, a very good tag team match with Kane and The Miz. Yes, The Miz. I'll get to that in a moment. Defeating the tandem of Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow, collectively known as the Rhodes Scholars. Finally, thanks to WWE gods, Miz is finally faced. I've been begging for this for about a year and a half now. It's been long overdue since he lost the WWE Championship. I'm really looking forward to this. He has a lot of potential. It was in his home state as well, Ohio. So it, could have, it, it couldn't have been more fitting. I mean, these guys were cheering him very, very excessively. Um, Miz is awesome chance throughout the matchup. I loved it. Miz looked like he was having a fun time. Hopefully he stays at face and doesn't go over his team on Sunday because he has a lot of potential to be a face. I've been calling for this for a long, long time now. Really glad to see it. So that was a good match as well. Very well at Russell. So up next, we have our main event with John Cena versus WWE Champion CM Punk. Of course, what do you think I'm going to say about this match? It was fantastic. Excellent action between these two WWE superstars with John Cena going over here. Of course, um, I'm not all that mad about John Cena going over because it looks pretty obvious that CM Punk will be going over on Sunday. So they need to have John Cena look good going into the pay-per-view. Same thing with Ryback. And as long as Punk retains on Sunday, that's all I'm happy about. I'm thrilled. But um, this was a great match to close the show. Very good way to hype up the triple threat WWE title match for Sunday. Really, really enjoyed it. Nice visual and teasing tension between Ryback and John Cena over the belt at the end with Punk looking on, you know, looking on uh, nervously at the title. Um, a very, very good site that you can check out on WWE.com. So overall, a very, very good and entertaining show. I was really enjoyed. Through, I, I was really entertained throughout the entire three hours. Didn't feel like it dragged as much. A lot of good action, a lot of good promos, and as I, said, as I just said, a lot of successful build for the Survivor Series pay-per-view in only mere days. They really needed to hype up this pay-per-view to be something really, really good because last year's build was pretty much shit, and the ratings suffered because of it. The pay-per-view itself was very, very good, but the hype was shit. So I'm glad they turned the whole hype thing around regarding Survivor Series. Got me extremely excited for the show. By having this show, a very, very good go-home show, as history shows, Raw always puts on great go-home shows for Survivor Series, and this was no exception. Really, really enjoyed it. Loving your thoughts on the show, guys. Make sure to tweet me up on at, on Twitter, at SamWordsCross on SchoolGSN. Make sure to subscribe for all my latest videos and whatnot. I really do appreciate it. And as I just said earlier in the video, I will be uploading my Survivor Series predictions in a, another video later in the week, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy your week, and this is GSM signing out. Till next time, guys.